I'm going to be reacting to a video done by Exploring with Josh called Attacked by Robert the Doll. And I highly recommend making sure your protections are in place before you go forward with this video. And just a quick disclaimer, I took notes as I was watching it, so I didn't forget. But with that being said, I did some channeling, writing some notes down as I watched it. But yeah, here we go. Before watching this video myself, I had to make sure that all my chakras had my holy oil on it. This is what mine looks like. And I always link it, you know, at the bottom or in my description somewhere. So, you know, you guys have access to it as well. But actually, I've had a run in with the energies and entities attached to this doll before. And it was when I was listening through or listening to a podcast and I'm having chest pains now because <laughs> when I was watching this video initially, it was the day before, so I need to reapply. But anyway, I was listening to it on another podcast and I kid you not, the pain that was, you know, given to me sent me to the floor. It was severe chest pains. I felt like I was having a heart attack. That's why I put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. Now, it's been a few years since then and I am much stronger, I am more aware, and I know how this stuff works. So, it's easier for me to protect myself, whereas those who are just getting into the paranormal or don't really understand how this stuff works, that's why it's imperative to put your protections up before continuing this video or watching anything or listening to anything associated to Robert the Doll because the entity or entities technically attached to this doll are malevolent AF. As I started recalling, you know, what happened a few years ago, I started getting scratches on my back and I was like, mm. that's when I remembered, oh shit, I got to put the holy oil on. So that's what I did. We have this idea where we are going to do a blood ritual sacrifice. What he just said, in this f few seconds, I've never seen so many bad decisions made so quickly. Guys, do not do this to any haunted item. First of all, don't be doing blood rituals, period, period. T -t -t -t. Don't do it. This is literally the worst thing that they could have possibly done here because I know they want to show the entity respect. There's a difference between respect and antagonizing, but the thing is the entity, no matter if you're being respectful or not, it's still going to drain your energy. And it's in a way influencing them to make this bad decision. And not only that with the blood ritual, you, they are literally tethering their energy to that doll and vice versa. They're literally creating an attachment with that doll on purpose, but they don't, I don't think they get it. I don't think they get it. So with that being said, I haven't watched anything on this guy's channel. This is the first time I've ever heard of him. This video popped up. It was about Robert the doll and Robert the doll was in my itinerary. So I thought might as well hit two birds with one stone, right? So I don't know what's gone on with him since making this video, but I would not be surprised if he starts having health issues, having accidents. Um, ooh, my head feels weird. Any weird bad luck, it's because of what he did. Well, technically it's because of the, how he goes through his investigations in general. He's got a lot of problems and yeah, guys, so word to the wise, do not do what this guy does on his channel. Please, please. But we also don't really believe in this curse or anything. Just because you don't believe doesn't mean anything. Just because you believe the sky is green doesn't make it green. So here I start to see shadow people, but it's more shadows of earthbound spirits, if that makes sense. 
and there is a lot of residual negative energy here because of all of the death and all of the bad things that happened. There's a, a weird collection of um, haunted items along here too, which kind of add a little bit to it. Uh, like these things, these were taken from the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. It is also important to note that this location attracts a crap ton of negative energy. I am not even kidding, okay? So it's going to attract haunted items. If you notice, there's going to be a lot of haunted items here. Um, it's going to attract people with negative attachments. And with that being said, because of the entities here, it's manipulating and influencing them to do things that produce this output of negative energy. So, Ouija boards, rituals, hello. That's why people keep doing it. It's because they are being manipulated into producing more negative energy there. It's kind of like, the best way to describe it is a negative energy magnet. So anything in the vicinity or anything energetically in the vicinity so even if you're thinking about going or just thinking about it it's going to attract that negative energy it's just going to bring more and make people do things they normally wouldn't do and the, the entities are facilitating that there and it's because it's like they're hungry they are so hungry for that now some of them don't know if all the haunted items are actually haunted yes and if they weren't they are now but like I was saying before it draws in the negative energy and those items for sure are haunted before they even got there without a question because they want that negative energy because it's a magnet so yes every single item that was put there is haunted all right so it is seven minutes and ten seconds in I started feeling pain, so I had to pause. And now, as I'm talking about it, I start, I, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. And it's getting hard to breathe. And it, it's like every time I try to take a breath, I feel like I'm being constricted, kind of like a snake in a way. It's like, you know how bow constrictors, you know, do their thing and then when the prey breathes it's like more air has escaped and they can't recover that air that's what i'm kind of feeling right now and it's burning in my throat that too the energy of all, all of us believing it told a story yeah, that made it happen form. so it's like yeah, you created form. this kind of allure around the idea that you must ask for permission for robert and then all of a sudden your camera works fine yeah right so i mean there's a lot of things that we interact yeah. with where it's like they start as something very small and then all of a sudden the collective thought grows into something much, much bigger than it ever was supposed to be. Now, what they just said about the thought forms, perfect. <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay, I'm good, I'm good. This is the thing. There's so much going on in this, in this location. Not only do you have Robert the doll, you also have all the earthbound spirits in that location from the war, from, you know, again, it's collecting things. And so it's attracting more, even earthbound spirits that weren't originally there. If they were in the area, they're going to be attracted to that place. There's a lot of negative residual energy. There is um, thought form energy in there. Because remember, people think that Robert gives them curses. And mm, that's not quite how that is. And because they associate him and then they kind of build it up too with the fear, it kind of took on its own thing, AKA a thought form, but also giving the, en the main entity attached to Robert more power, which is bad. But more serious than that, people, they, they get into accidents, they get very sick. But the thing with the curse is it's, I mean, I guess you could consider it a curse, but it's not a curse in the technical terms. It's because they are leaving with that residual energy 
and or attachment, some people are leaving with attachments from that place because they didn't cleanse their self before they, you know, returned home and they brought it back with them and now there's paranormal activity. A lot of them just assume it's a curse and you can see it as a curse, but you got to know how it works in order to combat it. But because this place is so popular, people have fed into that energy and it has created more PK activity. Robert the doll was given to this little boy that lived in Key West as a gift. Uh, this little boy named Robert Eugene Otto. Uh, it was given to him uh, for his birthday. Immediately, little Robert, he became obsessed with this doll. He started to bring it around with him everywhere. He would talk to him. Uh, he started dressing him up in his own clothes. And eventually he gave him his own name. The little boy started to call the doll Robert, started to refer to him as Robert. He went by his middle name for the rest of his life, Eugene. After the boy started to get attached to this doll, his parents started to have like paranormal experiences. Um, they would hear Gene talking to somebody in his room and it sounded like there was somebody else in there with him. They would run in, they wouldn't see anybody, but he would be there sitting in front of Robert, like speaking back and forth with him. Wow. Um, things would start flying around their house. Furniture would get moved on their own. Uh, they would hear Gene like messing around up in his room and he would come in, things would be broken, uh, things would be missing. The little boy would blame it on Robert. He swore that he didn't do anything. It wasn't me, it was Robert, Robert did it. The parents have experiences with Robert and Eugene until Eugene grows up. Uh, when he turns 18, he went to Europe. Uh, he wanted to be a painter, so he went to study art in France. He lived there for a while. So let's talk about the doll specifically and what's attached to it. There are multiple entities involved. So it is my firm belief that Robert, AKA he goes by Eugene or went by Eugene as he grew up, that doll had the entity attached to it before he got it. That's the main one. Someone used black magic rituals or dark magic rituals to create this Frankenstein entity or a composition of multiple entities put together. This thing is literally, it feels like they took aspects from different entities and created one big Thing. This thing looks nasty. It would be a tulpa in a way, in a way, not completely, but this is an entity created by man. On purpose, I suspect that the person who gave that doll as a gift wasn't the one who did the black magic on the doll. I suspect they got it secondhand somewhere and didn't realize that that doll had been tampered with. So this thing is very demon-like. Technically, you can say it's a man-made demon. This thing also blocks your chakras and makes you see things that either are an illusion or it put there. It kind of looks like this. And yeah, it looks weird because of the light, but can you see it? It looks somewhat like that, but more demon-y. The other thing that is attached to it, or other things, are the earthbound entities of the location. You have some pretty nasty ones that like to mess around with the visitors to add into the fear. And they work with the main entity to do this. But so the earthbound entities came separate. They came after it was brought to the museum. So it's not something that Eugene had, you know, at the beginning when he received the doll. It came after it was brought to the museum. She really had no idea that this was waiting for her in Key West. So when she shows up here and this starts to happen, there, uh, you know, a lot of tension comes up in their life. Their marriage kind of falls apart. And as I've talked about before on my channel, Native Entities will purposely cause relationship disputes among a family because again, output of negative energy so they can feed off of it. They, uh, they stay together until Eugene dies. Uh, he dies in the 1970s. 
prior to his death, he uh, was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. It doesn't surprise me that Eugene got sick. It hit him really hard, really affected him. I heard that as well. Yeah. That was like a voice. Yeah. Yeah. Robert did not make that sound. It was a soldier earthbound spirit. According to her, has come to life and shut her. Yeah, held the door shut in there. What? Want to let yeah. it out. And that was after a few years of her having him. So after that, she was like, I, I got it. I got to get rid of it. So she drops him off here at the museum. She later died, like about 100 days later. Uh, Myrtle Reuter died. Holy crap. I'm not surprised that she died 100 days after leaving him at that museum. Because it's kind of like an abandonment thing. And to him, or it, I should say, it's kind of like an F you. Like, haha, well, fine, then die kind of thing, you know? So about this point, I start feeling really sleepy even after drinking caffeine. It's like the caffeine did nothing. They left here, they started to experience the curse. So is there letters coming in daily? Yeah, pretty much. We get, we almost get one like every day. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys start to experience something with oh it. Oh my God. Yeah, people send us, um, people send us anything from the gift shop back here all the time like the robber cups and like the pins yeah. and they get them inside their house they feel an energy with it they want to get rid of it and it ends up back here so the reason pe people are having issues with the, the stuff from the gift shop well duh the negative energy in that building in general is on the items it's kind of like let's say there's a fire in a house right well, there's going to be, like, smoke residue. There's going to be, like, ash and stuff on the furniture. It's going to be on the decorations. Same thing with this, but apply it as negative energy, residual energy. And some of them have attachments of some of the spirits that dwell there. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I can't say not to buy anything from the gift shop because I don't want to get sued. But... I would do it with your own discretion, knowing that you could be bringing something home with you. And it's not Robert's curse. It's, no. It is, again, the residual energy and or the attachment you gained from that space. And you're just bringing it back home unless you uh, cleanse yourself. That's why it's important when you go to places like this that you cleanse the crap out of yourself before you go into your car and or house because you don't want this stuff back at your place it sucks and the negative energy is so easy to spread and the doll the entity associated with the doll is so good at mind fucking people not even kidding and it is really good at influencing people now you did that video eight months ago and you had some pretty bad luck this year but also colby did too do you think it could be from that doll i mean <clears throat> what was so weird is we did not believe that it was going to give us bad luck and then yeah like this year has been the most crazy ups and down year of our entire lives um so who's to say i mean yeah a lot of a lot of like the people who have watched the video have blamed a lot of health issues that colby's had yeah. Bad luck that we've had like this year on Rock of the Doll. Obviously, that's, you know, teach their own. Remember that video I did on Colby? They just confirmed what I said. Yeah, he's going to have health issues because he's an absorber. Guys, watch that video. He, he, I don't think he's seen it yet. He needs to see it because this is important. He needs to understand what's going on so he can protect himself and not be sick. But that doesn't surprise me that he's having health issues because, like I said, that, and they were at with Robert the doll. Yeah. Even somebody that isn't an absorber is going to leave that place feeling not great. But because he's more sensitive to that stuff, he's going to have a rougher time. And he did, apparently. So that's a good validation for me. Um, not for him, though, because, again, it's not fun when a person has to suffer. And I don't want him to suffer at all. Hence the video. So around here, I started feeling scratches again, but because I had put the holy oil on, it's like it would try and it, I could feel it bounce off, like that negative energy bounce off my body. Not a doctor, it is a soldier. 
they may not be comfortable talking to us, like yeah. coming up and speaking. So maybe if we set this like in the other room. All right. So yeah, some of the spirits in there, the earthbound spirits, they do not like the filming. <laughs> some of them do. Some of them like the attention. Some of them like to feed into that negative energy. But there's this one I did see and he looks like he had some kind of leadership role. Um, he's got grayish hair. It's kind of shorter on the sides and it's more dense up at the top. He looks like he's in his late 50s. Late 50s. I can't see him being more than like 65. There's, I don't think he's 65. But I would say even late 40s to 50s. And he's somewhat of a hard ass. It's like, he's like the type of leader that would be really strict over his soldiers that he commanded. And it kind of reminds me of like the boomer population today. Um, especially the attitude, like back in my day, we'd walk miles in the snow just to get to the school bus stop. I swear I heard him say, these kids these days have it way too easy with the technology. He's grumpy AF though exercise you yeah because they know those two are gonna need an exorcism after they leave that place because of that ritual that they did or were doing or gonna do listen they're smart they know what's gonna happen so this is where i took a break and went to bed because i started feeling not great and when i start feeling that way i know to separate myself and then continue later but I took some notes this morning when I woke up and pretty much I say you know this entity makes people obsessed with them so he can keep them around to feed off of very parasitic like can travel through mirrors blocks chakras especially third eye and also the negative energy there is darkening the other entities around it and or spirits so the earthbound spirits, some of them are being darkened and it's making some of them demonized. Though from what I see, only one has been kind of going more towards that route. One thing that was very frustrating is the doll isn't being kept properly and it's the container he's in isn't sealed properly. So if you look at the Annabelle doll, look how it's sealed and there's a whole system that the Warrens do, that Tony Sparrow does, to make sure that doll doesn't like escape the case, or at least make sure that some of the negative effects from the doll don't carry over too much. And they need to do that with this one. Because this entity is a product of dark magic practices, by doing more of that isn't going to help the situation. I know they're trying to show them respect, but to be honest, it's stupid and dangerous and it's just going to make things worse. It's going to make the entity stronger, create stronger energy tethers, aka attachments to those two. And literally by them doing that ritual, that's inviting the entity to their energetic space to do whatever it wants. If it wants to possess him or the other guy, it will try. That's why you don't do that kind of stuff. So right as I was writing this part in my notes, the place on my stomach where I put the holy oil started to burn. And again, it tried, but it bounced off. Do you understand what we are doing? The question is, do you know what it means? Do they understand what they just did? Because I don't think they do. And what's very frustrating is they do this stuff and they're not the only one who does that stuff. Other investigators do it. Zach Bagans does it. And it makes people think, oh, it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. Oh, yeah. oh shit. Let's get out of here. You good? Oh, I don't know. Dude. I'm I'm Dude, I'm getting like a like a tightness in my chest. I'm I'm burning. I'm burning. Shit. So the fact that they had the reaction that they did doesn't surprise me, which is why I hope people learn from this video of what not to do. 
I'm frustrated. Like, you have no idea how frustrated I am when you have these people on YouTube or TV or whatever, and they do stuff like this that's dangerous. It's not okay at all. It's not safe. It's, no. No. If you like this type of video, I highly recommend watching the video I did where I react to the Conjuring House video featuring Matt Rife.